Hi, ladies. Hello, 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 gorgeous woman. So, I'm so excited. Um, VIPers, I apologize. My Zoom is not playing nicely with me today, and I wasn't able to stream it into Facebook Live. So, my VIPers, come into the Zoom room as soon as we're done here. I'm excited to see everyone. When you come in, say hi. Let me know how you are doing. I need some caffeine for a second. All right. Whew. I am like fired up today. I'm so excited for this. So let me just take a... Whew. If anyone wants to do this with me, just kind of like shake it out. Let me... Whew. Take a deep breath and just kind of ground into this today. So again, say hi when you come in. Let me know that you're here. There have been so many amazing posts today. I am so excited. And there have been posts where I we're seeing life-changing moments in a snap in the first day one of you beautiful women wrote that her complete perspective in her life changed in day one. She was able to see her own worth and that alone is worth millions of dollars. Am I right? Yes. Hey guys. Hey, welcome. Welcome. All right. And another one saw the patterns, got to saw, see the patterns of deepness of love that her husband actually does hold for her. And was able to see that for the first time in years. I want you to keep posting because these are just so inspiring to me, to everyone else here. So keep sharing those moments. Because there were a couple times today where I was reading your answers and I was like, oh man, I just started tearing up. So excited to for your breakthroughs. For those moments and day three I told you, you guys this is gonna get more exciting and more exciting each day day three is is not the top and then we go back down day three we're just we're just gonna keep going up as we go through this so you by being here made the choice to do something differently and that alone is huge that is huge so congratulations for that so as we step into day three of the Improve Your Communication and Connection Challenge, I want to tell you how proud I am of you. I want to congratulate you on being the type of woman who owns her life, her relationships, who invests in herself for a better life. And so with that, let's go into the mantra together. Let me see if I can actually, I'm going to try to put it in the chat this time. So when did you guys come in? Say hi, tell me that you're here so I know you're here. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay so I know you're here and feel free to comment too. I love to see the comments, your aha moments. It's uh, really helpful to me if anything comes up where you're like, oh, yes, Val, I get it. Or that's something new or never seen it that way. Anything like that, if you can just let me know at that time so I can go back. Hey, ladies, hey, Bonnie Marie, Nella, Jessica, hey, hi. All right, so in day three, you guys see me looking to the right, I'm kind of looking, I'm trying to keep track of the chat. I'm probably gonna stop doing that soon as I really dive into this. So day three, we're learning why we get stuck in these patterns in the first place and these broken loops in our relationship. And so we're using communication as an example, but these loops and patterns show up in all areas of our lives and our relationships. You'll probably start to see if you look through your relationship patterns that keep happening over and over and over again, right? Some of the things um, like who we pick as a partner. If you look back through your partners, there's probably semblance. You might even look back at your partners and say, oh, kind of look like my kind of uh, maybe not look like, but remind me of my dad. Remind me of my mom. These are patterns. Boundaries are patterns. Do we have like walled off boundaries? Are we walled off? Do we not let people into our space? I remember when my husband and I first started dating, I was, I was very walled off. Um, he, and he's a real touchy feely. I was physically walled off. He's a very touchy feely person and he would go to grab my hand and I, I would move it away. 
and be like, man, what's going on with this girl? Like sometimes she's super cool and other times like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, and, and there's physically walled off. There's emotionally walled off or shut down. There is um, vulnerability walled off, right? Or there's, you have boundaries where you're too open. You kind of let everything in. I call these psychological boundaries. You, you hold everyone else's emotions. You guys understand that? We hold everyone else's emotions, like a big bag that we're carrying around. If someone's sad around us, we, whew, we're sad too. Um, if someone's disappointed in us, it's like, oh, we gotta, we must be disappointed in us too. Uh, part, we have patterns around trust. How do we trust? Do we trust people? Do we trust that they're going to be there for us? Do we trust that they're going to leave us? That's attachment. How we use our emotions. Some of us have patterns around, we go more to anger. We go more to sadness. How do we use our emotions? How do we get our needs met? These are all patterns that we need to look at. We're just looking at communication in these five days. We're, we're using communication as a tool to decipher kind of what maybe is going on, to change perspective a little bit. I also, I want to take a second to go back to something I said in yesterday's um, live. I said that you are in charge of your own feelings. I make myself feel. And your partner is in charge of their own feelings. We're not responsible for each other's feelings. I wholly stands by this. And I want to clarify this a little bit. When I say your partner is in charge of their feelings, yes, they are. And you can hold space for them in those feelings. But I don't want you to hold space in here. I want you to hold it right here, right next to you. Just like that little boy or that little girl. Just sit in your lap. They're not inside. They're right here. <clears throat> so you're not responsible for how they feel. They make themselves feel that way based on whatever meaning that they created out of the experience. But if you can, if you feel safe, you can hold space for them out here next to you. Put, put it on your lap. Um, Laura, Zoom's not working tonight. It will, <laughs> it's not streaming into the Facebook Live. So uh, we will meet in the Zoom after this is over. All right. Uh, feelings also, uh, we read feelings wrong often. And whatever your feeling is, is not wrong. That's not what I'm saying. You are totally entitled to your feelings. Your feelings are right. However, we don't go deep enough with them. We have to start questioning our feelings. Why am I feeling this way? What triggered me? Usually what we do is we, I'm anger. I'm angry. So whatever that person did was wrong because I'm angry. So I'm going to blow up. And I'm really, I'm really angry about that. <laughs> right? Well, what usually it is, is we're not usually angry about what just happened in front of us. We're, ang we're getting triggered for something that happened in the past. And we stay so much in the past that we can't live in the present and the future. This is a big thing to think about. We have to start questioning those feelings. Okay. Hey, hey there, anger. Hey there, little angry man inside of me. Why are you so angry? What's going on? Why are you huffing and puffing in there? What's up? What did you think just happened? What meaning did you make out of that? Oh, your husband didn't uh, forgot to pick up the tomatoes at the store? Why did that make you angry? Oh, because the meaning, you know, the little angry guy in there is like, well, the meaning I made up was he didn't pick up the tomatoes because he doesn't give a shit about me. Of course you're going to be angry then. But is that really true? Is that meaning really true? Is it really about this person in front of me? Or is it reminding me of how I felt so small when my dad forgot my birthday? Or when my partner raises their voice. Now, I'm not talking, you know, abusive type of language. It's different. What I'm talking about is when we kind of whoosh, when we put our feelings all over everyone else. Am I really upset that he's raising his voice or can I be an adult and kind of be like, okay, that's about him. 
it's okay. I can put up my, my protective shield and hold a little bit of space. Or is he reminding me of how I felt so small in my, when my mom used to yell at me? We need to dig into these feelings more, understand these emotions more. So I just want you to really think about that. It, this could be a week training alone. So I don't, I can't go into it. It's a lot of what, uh, it's a lot of somatic training, a lot of healing, a lot of emotions work, understanding what really is that motion and how can I um, hold space for it? How can I put it to the side and question it? And we do a lot of that in the greatest love experience and some of my other programs. So I just want to bring that up though, because your feelings are valid. And sometimes the meaning that you made up may be very valid. It may be the meaning I make up is he triggers me all the time and I don't deserve that. And that may be very valid and you need to question that. Often it goes like this. If I truly believed I am valuable and he is valuable, would I allow this type of behavior or would I set a boundary around it? <sighs> Again, this is a big conversation, but I wanted to bring it up because your, your feelings are valid and I want you to start looking at them deeper though. Don't take your feelings for surface level because anger is actually a secondary feeling, a secondary emotion. It covers up sadness, disappointment, hurt, everything else. So look at it deeper. Hey, are you really angry down there, little guy? Nope, I'm really hurt. I'm really sad. Oh, well, we can deal with that differently then, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> Nella said, interesting. Okay. So this is the why the work of emotional boundaries. Being able to hold space for another person's perspectives and feelings is so important. And the work of healing your triggers so your triggers aren't like whooshed all over your partner and you and your partner stop triggering each other because the relationships are amazing for that. We get to trigger each other back and forth, back and forth. We know all this, all, all the spots to push. And in reality, we probably picked that partner because of that. Because they are close enough to what we grew up with but different enough that we expect a different outcome. Unfortunately, our brains just aren't that advanced. <laughs> we just end up repeating the same habits over and over and over again that our parents did, right? So, but there is something beautiful about this. Once you understand this and you start doing this work, um, relationships can be such a healing tool. Because once you start seeing those triggers and you start healing them, Oh, it, it's just beautiful. And you get to do that together. And, you know, I've seen it firsthand and I've seen it in most of the women I work with. When we start to heal our triggers, our past, our partner's triggers start to heal too because we stop triggering each other. <laughs> we start healing with each other. This is, this is part of quantum transformation, optimal transformation. When you start to change, your partner starts to change and then you create an even bigger an even bigger relationship, an even better relationship. The whole system changes. It's, it's really magical. So, all right. It's kind of my soapbox here. Hey, Maria. All right. So, if we want really a truly intimate, awesome relationship, we have to touch on a lot of these different things that I just talked about. So, one thing that popped up today in a lot of the posts is when I ask, oh, when you and your partner are fighting, what deep feelings come up for you? And almost all of you wrote some version of feeling not good enough, not loved, not lovable. And these, these are some signs of the biggest blockers to relationships. I use a neuroscience technique that's called memory reconsolidation. And it states that most of us have one of two relationship blocks. First one, my childhood didn't meet my needs. So it's my fault. I am unlovable, so I am never going to find anyone better. So essentially, if we didn't get the nurturing or if our parents might have been abusive or they weren't there for, for us, if they were narcissistic, if they had an addiction, it's too hard to believe that 
um, it was it's them that's bad because oh the person who is supposed to be taking care of us is bad no 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 can't do that so what we do is we say it's my fault if my parents can't meet my needs it must be my fault it must be that I'm doing something wrong I'm not good enough for true love because parents are supposed to meet needs that's what we see on TV right yeah sharing the second thing is, so I want you guys to think about this, what comes up for you. The second thing is, my childhood didn't meet my needs, so I need to find someone else to meet my needs. <laughs> yeah? Here, we search for someone who will give us the love, maybe that we didn't receive. The affection that our parents didn't give us, or some other need that wasn't met, whether it's our parents or our caretakers, some need that wasn't met, where we find a partner who we think can maybe fulfill those needs. Then we expect our partners to fulfill these needs. When they can't, we get resentful, and we get angry. Or we go back into that place of, I must not be good enough. This person's not fulfilling my needs either. It must be me again. So you guys, this isn't a self-love challenge, <laughs> although we've talked a lot about it because I truly believe without that, without that worthiness, if you don't love yourself, if you don't truly believe that you're good enough and lovable, it's hard to receive love. And if at any time we don't feel loved and completely accepted by someone who we have an intimacy, uh, intimate relationship with, our brain actually is sending a danger signal to our brain. It's like, danger, danger, you must gain back their love quick or run away, danger, danger, right? If you or your partner aren't feeling loved and connected to one another, your brain will actually create subconscious thoughts. He's awful. He's not safe. She's being a nag. He doesn't really love me. And so on. This is protection. These thoughts create emotions of fear, hurt, anger, loneliness, disappointment. When you feel these emotions, when you feel this danger signal, you're going to react in one of two ways. You're going to try to move closer to your partner or you're going to try to move away from your partner. We move closer by complaining, blaming, yelling, becoming angry, expressing disapproval, pursuing, pushing, telling our partner how they need to change, or threatening our partner. So these are all attempts to, to get our partner to notice us or to change their actions so we can feel safer. We need somebody else to change so that we can feel safe. Mm. Hmm. Again, I, I always want you to remember, I am not talking about a physically abusive relationship. That's completely different. Okay? If that is the case, we need to be calling uh, the hotline and not being here. So I want you to know that. I'm talking about when you're, when you're both triggered and you're both reacting. So we move away by zoning out, by leaving, by changing the subject, by not listening, by distancing, by refusing, um, by doing one of these things. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes? Um, by refusing to talk, by giving up, by withdrawing, by occupying our time with another activity. Because that feels safer. It feels more fun. These are all attempts to leave them before they get the chance to leave us. I hope you guys heard that. I hope you guys heard that. What I want you to fully understand is moving away and moving closer are both attempts at getting that attention. They're both attempts at saving your relationship. So let me dig a little bit deeper here. Because you, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, right? You might think, how is anger helping my marriage? Or how is, um, how is not listening an attempt to heal our marriage? I'm glad you asked, right? Until I, I said the story a little bit ago. You know, when my son was three years old, I was doing dishes with my back turned towards him and he was, you know, chatting away, telling me something and I just, okay, yep, yeah, okay. And he comes behind me and he grabs, grabs me and he yells with an anger, like, pay attention to me. Yeah, he used anger to get me to pay attention. This is what we do in relationships. We don't feel close, so we try to get the attention any way that we can. 
Now, also, many moons ago, my husband and I used to function primarily from our childhood brain, especially when we were fighting. We now know better, most of the time, at least. Um, and my husband is what I call a spider webber. You guys might see this a lot in your relationships. One time we were having a pretty loud conversation and um, about how we didn't come home one time, and he started reminding me of the time three years ago when I left early from his parents' house, and then how my brother never paid back the $50 that he owed us, or when we went to a party with friends and I was being bitchy to him. It's like could have climbed up a wall, like the Eiffel Tower, with all those spider webs he was throwing all over the place, completely off topic. Who else does this? Yeah? This is another losing strategy. So when he did this, I would just stop listening. And if it kept going on, I would, I'd walk away. I was trying to avoid an argument. I was moving away in an effort to keep us from fighting and in essence to keep us closer. Yeah, Laura, you're right. It's so easy to find a way to distract, your, to distract yourself from the hard stuff. But when we do that, when we avoid, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, we look up and we pay attention and we're like, shit. It's gotten too big. What I want you to understand is, though, it, it seems that maybe your partner's actions are meant to hurt you. Or maybe you're thinking they're so shut down. They're so unemotional. They must not feel anything. What they're trying to do is actually save the relationship in some way. Because if we don't talk about it, we don't fight, and then we can be okay. And the truth is, honestly, most women, <laughs> it's usually women who are more miserable in the relationship than the men. So they might not even notice. So I want you, um, it seems that our actions are meant to hurt the other person or for them to hurt us, and it's actually the exact opposite. That knowledge, maybe, can help you to see that your partner isn't awful. They're just reacting, trying to keep themselves in your relationship safe at some level, safe from some hurt. What brain science tells us that our nervous system is constantly scanning our body for safety. Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? It's crazy. Recent studies actually show that your brain stem, your amygdala, and your midbrain scan, all of these things, and if this was your brain kind of in here, scans your environment four to five times per second, four to five times per second to see if you are okay. So your brain, in the 10 seconds it took me to say that, just scanned 50 times to make sure you're okay. And if you feel safe, what happens is you get to stay in your wise adult brain and you relax. If you're not safe, for some reason, say for example, you're feeling that your partner is upset with you, has a judgment or disappointment with you, or your partner isn't doing what, what you think they should do, or you're feeling disconnected, or you're making up these meanings about what's going on. When we're not safe, we move into our amygdala or our survival brain for defensiveness and self-protection. This shows up as an adaptive child brain. This is where moving away and moving closer strategies come from. Things that we did in our childhood that worked and now we're gonna keep doing them because we're not feeling safe, but they helped us to feel safe as children. When we're thinking, when we're not feeling safe, we're also moving into, I want you to listen to this, I will change what you are doing right now. Yeah? I'm gonna nag at you to make you change it. I'm gonna tell you you're awful so you shut up. I'm going to get angry, so you stop. I'm going to change what you're doing right now because I'm not feeling safe. Or, I will psychologically distance from you now. Sometimes physically distance because I'm not feeling safe. And remember, safety in a relationship is connection. So this happens unconsciously. I want to tell you, though, I want to show you some signs that this might be happening in your relationship. I want to read off some signs of what an adaptive child might look like. So essentially, 
<laughs> you're you're acting like a teenager, right? You're reactive, reactive to everything. Very black and white thinking. This is right or wrong. There's no shades of gray in there. Perfectionism, that can show up a lot. Rigidness, harshness, being overly certain. I'm right, you're wrong. Overreaction, overreaction. So you didn't get the tomatoes. Oh, I can't believe you didn't get the tomatoes. How could you not get the tomatoes? Overreaction, shut down. Fixed possibilities. Nothing will ever change. There's nothing that I can do. There's only one way to get there. Only one way to do things. Feeling tight in your body. Let me ask you right now, relax your shoulders. How many people were actually able to relax your shoulders? How many of you didn't even notice that your shoulders were tight to start with? Addictions is also a sign. These are strategies we hold because of trauma, because of not feeling safe. And we use them to try to get ourselves back to safety. This is a funny story. This is why like really, really successful people are often really, really bad in relationships because we are um, rewarded as a society for these things. We're rewarded for being rigid right? For following the law. We are rewarded for being perfectionists, for being very detail oriented. We are rewarded for being certain. You know, that's one of the things of good leaders, they are certain, they are able to make a decision quickly. We are rewarded for these same things that can hurt our relationship. These tactics work the children but they're not good <laughs> for our adult relationships. So Stephen Porges, the founder of Polyvagal Theory, Theory and director of the Trauma Stress Research, indicates that we need two things to feel safe. One, you have no judgment of the person you're sitting with. That includes yourself. You have no judgment of them. And you have no agenda for them. You don't need them to change in order for you to feel safe. Now, this doesn't mean you don't create boundaries, because you do. But our judgment or agenda or expectations that I see from so many women is that their partner is supposed to make them happy or supposed to make them feel good enough. And this took me a long time to learn myself. I'm responsible for making myself happy and I'm responsible for making myself feel good enough. my responsibility, not my partner's. You know, when I was growing up, I always felt that it was my responsibility to make my parents happy. And I would try and try. I was the good girl, right? Um, this is what we call the hero child, the one with the good grades, the athletes, the athlete, never did drugs, always followed the rules, read all the self-help and self-development books I could get my hands on, starting in third grade. All of these things, try to make them happy. Anyone else? Anyone else here? Always felt like it's your responsibility to make everyone else happy. Again, this is, this is how we're taught. This is how we're taught. It's our job to keep our family together, to make everyone else happy because maybe our brothers or our sisters aren't doing it or maybe our parents couldn't do it themselves so we had to do it. Then one day I realized none of this was helping. None of this was making my parents happy. So I rebelled. I pushed them away. I got angry with them. It was unfair that all the weight of everyone else's happiness and good enoughness was put on my shoulders. Unfair. Who else feels like they hold everyone else's emotional weight? They're responsible for everyone else's emotions around them. Not fair. And this is what happens in relationships. When we expect our partners to make us happy or make us feel good enough and we don't do it ourselves, we give them that weight. Here you go. Here you go. Your job. Make me feel good. Make me feel good. And it's an impossible challenge because no one else can make you feel good except for yourself. It's an impossible challenge you're giving to them. However, when we are happy, when we are becoming love, when we are love, when we feel good enough, 
Our partners know exactly how to treat us. The weight is lifted off their shoulders. They can relax into the relationship. They're not stuck in that fear. Is this safe? Is this safe? Is this safe? And you get to let the emotional weight off as well. You don't have to hold that. Am I saying don't be there for anyone? No. Am I saying don't hold compassion? No. You can do all of those things. But again, you can sit it right next to you like a little kid, right? Sit it on your lap. Rub their back. Hold that space for those emotions. But you can't, and it's not your responsibility to make somebody else feel good enough. Now, I'm also not saying a relationship can't enhance your confidence, your self-esteem, your happiness. It absolutely can. When you're in a good, solid, healthy relationship, it can feel fun and exciting, and it actually changes your chemicals, oxytocin, and, and makes you feel happier. That's also about your thoughts and how you feel around that. If I feel, if I think I'm in love with my partner, I release those chemicals. But by relying on another person to do this is just unfair. Just like it was unfair to us as children. Just like it's unfair to us now. It's not fair to allow anyone else. It's your responsibility and your responsibility alone to feel good enough and to be happy. So, I want you to think back to those beliefs you pulled out in day one. I bet they were filled with judgments and agendas for your partner, yes? How you wanted your partner to change, what you didn't like about your partner. In all fairness, I asked you to. <laughs> but when you continue to hold on these to these beliefs, these judgments, these agendas, we can't feel safe in the we can't feel safe in the relationship. It's just not even possible. So until we can learn to detach from these judgments and agendas, we're constantly be acting in the child part of our brain. And so will our partner. Now it takes us some work, right? I wish I could tell you to just stop judging your partner or boom, you no longer judge or stop trying to get them to change and you could do it. One day I will get that magic wand. One day, I tell you. I want to sing like the Cinderella story or song where she's like, doo -doo, boop, 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 boop. I don't have that magic wand yet. One day I hope to have it. <laughs> so it takes some work. Well, we do these things in order to keep us safe, especially if there's infidelity, if there's lying, or if there's any other broken trust in the past. And there are so many ways, so many areas that trust can be broken uh, that we don't even think about, that we don't even know about. Outside of infidelity, lying, those are the two big ones but there's 13 other ways. Something as small as talking to your best friend about your partner in a bad way. Putting down your partner in front of somebody. Those can all break trust. And when you're not feeling that trust, you're not feeling safe. So in order for us to truly step out of this child, this toddler behavior, this toddler brain, and start to feel safe with ourselves and in our relationship, we have to let go of the past hurts the past pains, the resentments. Even from childhood, we have to heal. And when we heal, we no longer need to protect ourselves with judgment and control. We get to do it in a very healthy way. We do it in a very different way. And we get to, now we protect ourselves and it pushes away our relationship when we are able to heal some of those triggers and pains. We get to protect us ourselves in a way that actually connects us to other people because boundaries are clear and they're kind and we get to do that when we're starting to feel safer. I want to bring up something too about judgment. I can guarantee if you're judging others, you need to start working on the self-love yourself. Okay, can you hear that? We judge others to make ourselves feel better. And when we come from a place of love, and we don't have that judgment of ourselves, we don't have to judge others. Because we can all just be. I can be important. You can be important. And I don't need to judge you. You don't need to judge me. We get to be. 
this is healthy love. This is what we aim for. No, you know, it's like a, a godlike type of aim. I don't think we'll ever reach it in our lifetimes, but it's where we get to aim. Yeah? yeah. You guys, did that hit anyone? Did that kind of like, oh, yeah. Maybe I do judge a lot. Okay, it says more about me. Yeah? And again, it's not your fault. This is, this is what we learn, to protect ourselves, to keep our sight, ourselves safe. So you can almost say to that part of you, that judgmental, judgmental part of you, like, hey. Think of it as like a, anyway, like a valley girl, like, oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. It's like, you get to say, hey there, like, I don't know why you're judging. I don't need it anymore, but totally thank you for protecting me all these years. Because it did make me feel better when you judge other people, but right now, I think I'm good. I think I'm nice and healthy, so kind of don't need you. So come out, come out here, sit next to me, maybe get behind me, and you know, if I decide that I need you again, I'll come back and get you. Okay, but right now, thank you so much for everything that you did, because you protected me, you got me through a lot, but come back here and sit back here, because... I just don't need to judge anymore. Yeah. Was that a really good voice? Did you guys really like that? <laughs> Again, it's not your fault. It's how we're wired. It's human. But, unfortunately, now that you know, it's your responsibility. Yes? <laughs> This is why learning relationship skills or reading a book or why most therapy doesn't work. They're teaching you skills. But we can't use these skills in the first place because we're triggered so often. We have all these like subconscious, these, these past traumas coming up in us, right? You know not to yell and nag. You know not to shut down, but you can't stop it. You don't want to push your partner away, but you can't help it because you need that safety. And it's an unconscious response that's happening four to five times a second. In The Greatest Love Experience, I teach you how to unlock and release the layers of hurt, emotions, wounds, and resentments that we all harbor. We spend months on this. It's deep. <laughs> so we can stop living in a place of fear so we can actually uh, regulate that nervous system. We can actually teach that nervous system that it's okay, we're safe. We're not little kids anymore, we're grown ass women. We're strong, we're protected, we're connected. And we get to change our brain and we get to heal that trauma. And again, just feel this, feel this tightness, that's all. Let it go. How good would it feel to feel like that in your body all the time? How do you think that would show up differently? in your relationship. Once we do this work, we stop living in a place of fear and using tactics to, to protect ourselves. And we start living in a place of love and compassion without judgment. Laura, thank you. I'm glad you liked my valley girl. <laughs> you start to feel warm, yielding, flexible, relaxed. You get to become love in your body and in your relationship. And you know what? Your partner will respond to this. Everyone around you will respond to this. It's magnetic. Everyone loves to be around that high energy. And you get to be in that high energy and have really beautiful boundaries. So again, you can stay connected and protected. You don't have to worry. Imagine how beautiful a relationship you could create if you no longer needed to be on edge. I want you to tell me in the comments kind of how that would feel for you. Uh, Diana, I see your comment. That feels like some opposites of safe people with Henry Club. Um, tell me more. I've read a bunch of his books around boundaries. 
Um, but tell me more what you're asking. So tell me in the comments, how amazing would that feel? When you didn't have to respond out of fear or out of not feeling safe. What would your relationship look like if you felt if you felt safe without judgment or agendas from your partner or to your partner? What I'm asking here is what would your what would your relationship feel like if you were accepted for exactly who you are and loved for exactly who you are, for your authentic loving self? Amazing, free. What becomes possible? Some of you might be thinking it's not possible. And I get it. I was there once. But I want you to I want you to go back. If you if you haven't watched all three days of the training, I want you to go back. Watch them again. Because the breakthroughs that I've seen in just three days <laughs> have already changed so many women in this group. I've seen it from you guys. Right? So how fun would it be to continue this for six months? How many insights, how many breakthroughs would you have? What would you create? What would become possible for you? So fulfilled, just like every moment was an adventure. I love that, I love it. We are supposed to use our judgment to determine if someone is a safe person in your world. Okay. I think the way they use judgment is different than what I'm talking about. So, yes, you have to use your intuition. You have to use your judgment of how maybe that person makes you feel. But judging, like I'm talking about, is a little bit is a little bit different. This is actually like, I'm not judge. Okay, so judge my judgment about how I feel about them, how I, how they make me feel. There's such a new, so many things are so nuanced, English language, so many words that mean different things, but they're the same word. What I'm talking about is the judgment of my husband's an asshole, <laughs> right? I'm judging him. I'm not saying, Ooh, I'm feeling a little Oh, I have this intuition. I, I'm not feeling good in this space. So I need, I'm going to, going to judge that emotion and I'm going to use that intuition to back away. That's different. Your judgment of your own feelings, of your own response is different than saying that person um, is an awful person. Maybe that's true, but I hope that's not your partner. I hope. Intimacy, Heather Minky, I love that. What is that? Intimacy. In to me see. I love it. In to me see. That's what intimacy is. Here's the thing. We won't get intimate. We will not create intimacy, intimacy in our relationships if we don't feel good with ourselves. Because why would you let anyone see into you if you had shame about who you are or feelings of unworthiness, feelings not good enough? It is such a basic foundational thing that's hard as shit to do. but so, so important. Let me make sure, let me check in. Any questions from you guys? Diana, did that help at all? Here's the thing with us too, it is things are nuanced. Things are nuanced. Um, that's why like reading a book may not help you because there's not a black and white. There's not a right and wrong. There's 50 million shades of gray. Things are nuanced. When I work with clients, I have to 
dig in to the details. You know, because there's your truth, there's, you know, the partner's truth, and there's something in the middle. Things are nuanced. There's not always a black and white. Sometimes that's why I have a hard time uh, doing these challenges or writing blogs or because something that I would tell to one of my clients, I might not tell to another one of my clients because it might not work for their situation, but it would work for, you know, this situation. One thing that worked for my marriage may not work. That's why in this challenge, you'll even see, I didn't tell you what was going on. I'm asking you to discover. I'm saying, here's what to look for. Now you make an opinion about it. I've given you all the knowledge. I've given you all the backgrounds. Now you make an opinion about it. Where do you think you fall? And based on that, we create different answers. Because what if you found out like you're withdrawing, you're withdrawing because that's keeping you safe. But what if I didn't know that about you and I came up to you and I said, well, here's the thing you need to do. You need to just disengage more. You're not disengaging enough. You need to have more timeouts. Oh, that's going to do the exact opposite of what you need, right? Or what if you're one of the people who are, who move towards, right? Who say, who maybe with anger, and then I come to you and I said, well, here's the thing. You need to speak up more. You need to use your voice more. No, no. <laughs> Maybe you need to use your voice in a different way, but you probably don't need to use your voice more. You just need to figure out what's going on under that trigger. And then you need to figure out how to um, say things that they'll be heard so they're not out of anger. Do you see what I'm saying? This way in this challenge, this way in my courses and my programs, I rarely will come out and say, this is exactly what you need to do. In the first, um, the very first module, this new program that's coming out, The Greatest Love Experience, I actually give five assessments. I have you go through a battery of assessments of um, your boundary style, your attachment style, your communication style, uh, your self-love style, and your past triggers. I give you five assessments, five assessments, and they're online, and you go, I created them, they're tested, they're true, you go, and you go through this quiz, and it gives you at the end, okay, this is your boundary style. You can go back, and then, so now I know, all right, well, maybe I'm a little walled off, so now I know, when, when we talk about boundaries in the program, I'm not going to do the things that someone who doesn't have, who has porous boundaries, I'm going to do the things, I'm going to do things to correct my walled off boundaries. Does this make sense for everyone? Based on your love blueprint, you have to do different things. It's kind of like those books that it was like, if you want the princess to marry the prince, then turn to page 55. If you want the princess to marry the knight, turn to page 66. Okay. You know, when I, um, when I first started to change my own relationship, I went and got a master's degree in professional counseling. What I found is the stuff that they teach doesn't really work. Why? because they just teach skills. It's just listening. It's just rehashing and rehashing. Oh, so sorry you feel that way. Oh, that must be awful. And yeah, sometimes those things are great. You need those things, right? Absolutely. But they didn't create change. That's why people stay in, in therapy for years and years and years. And they're like, oh, you've been in therapy for 20 years? <laughs> And then I started to discover neuroscience, brain change, and why we do the things we do at a subconscious level. You know, it's pretty still a new field as far as um, science goes. I think in 2020 or tw um, 2000, it was discovered that our neuro ne neural networks in our brain could be reprogrammed. They could change. Before that, it was always taught that 
once you reach age 18, 19, 20, you just are who you are. Now we know that there are processes and there are things that you can do to change it. So I started to learn why we do the things we do at a subconscious level. A lot of things, some of the things I talked about today. And I started to incorporate this work and into my life about how to start reprogramming. Reprogramming, it's called memory reconsolidation. Reprogramming things. So I, I, and I saw incredible results, fast results. Habits would change in just moments rather than years. I did this with a couple the other, um, a couple of months ago. And it was an issue around anger and it was just a habit of anger, of rage. And I used this tool, stopped. He was like, oh. so then they came back a week later and I was like, oh, how's it going? Haven't, haven't yelled, haven't been angry. And his wife's like, yeah, he hasn't. No kids, nothing. Talked to them last week, I think. This is three months later. Nope. Something that happened probably 20 times a day just stopped. It's pretty amazing. So, yeah. Nella wasted so much time, yeah. So, and I thought, like, I need to show others how to do this on a bigger scale than what I could do in my office one-on-one. -on -one. So I figured there's a lot of women out there probably who felt stuck because their partners weren't ready to change or they didn't like therapy or therapy didn't work. Women just like me, who their partner just wasn't ready to change. Because like I said, too often the woman is more disappointed than the men. Because we need that intimacy more. Or the men are like, oh, no, we can change this ourselves. We don't need to go to therapy. We don't need to do anything. But here's the thing. It doesn't mean that you have to stay unhappy. And it doesn't mean that you need to leave the relationship. It means that you get to change. You get to change it yourself. You get to become the hero of your own greatest love story. Because every great love story includes a journey of overcoming, right? It's a tale of the hero who must defeat incredible odds and then returns home completely transformed. And this is what I want to, this is what I'm talking about. This is what you get to do. You get to do it. You don't have to. It's for your happiness. It's for your growth. It's for your love. It's for your healing. It's for you becoming. Okay. So about eight years ago, I released my very first program, my very first online group coaching program it was called, it was called Relationship Mindset Boot Camp. It was amazing. We didn't, we, we focused a little bit on skills, on relationship skills, right? The communication skills, the boundary skills, everything that you, you can like, you know, you can Google. We focused a little bit on that, but we really focused on mindset, on neuroscience about reprogramming beliefs. And when we do this, remember beliefs create our thoughts, create our emotions, create our circumstances. When we start at the very top, it's the ripple that changes. It's the snowball that creates all the changes. It changes how we show up. This program was amazing. Eight weeks. It was an eight week program. Ran it about eight years ago. I ran it for a couple years. I still talk to a lot of my clients from that program and they still rave about how the, how the program was life changing. So then I, I thought, like, but I, I feel like it's still missing a piece because I, as I evolve, my programs evolve. So the healing piece is what I realized was missing. So I already have my master's in counseling. I already done a lot of um, trauma work, um, a lot of healing work and but I was like, I'm going to dig into this deeper. So I took two years. I became an expert with somatic and trauma healing. And then I created the Heal to Transform program. This was a program that anyone could take, women or men, and it would walk you through five steps of true forgiveness. And the way I look at forgiveness, the way I see it, it's not about letting the other person off the hook. It's about releasing our hurt. It was a release of our hurt, our trauma, our triggers. Then I started learning about inner child work. 
about energy healing. I started to include that. Again, beautiful, beautiful results. So I thought, hmm, maybe I should combine these two together, right? So let's do the mindset and the healing just for relationships, just for women who are ready to change their relationship, become the hero of their greatest love story, to who are ready to step in that challenge and be the change that they need, that their partners need, that their families need. So I, I said, let's combine these two together. So I did. And those results were exponentially better. We evolved. And then I made it a year program because I'm thinking, oh, well, if we can get these results and, you know, 12 or you no, know, six months, imagine what we can do for a year. And it was fun. I loved the year program. It was fun. I got to know these women so deeply. Some of them are, are here. <laughs> and so many got the exact results they needed in six months. And then they continued on the journey. Some of them continued. Some of them said, no, I, I'm good. This is what I needed. I don't need, I don't need to do anymore. Some of them continued on the journey because they love the support. They love to know that they have an expert in their corner whenever something comes up because new level, new devil, as we grow, new things come up. And some of them um, love the, the, the group, the energy of the group. Getting to sit in a Zoom room uh, every week with people that really know you at a deep level. So then I came in and I started looking at my personal clients. My personal clients, we see like whoo, quick results. So how could I get my group clients these same results? So this is what I did. I started noticing the patterns, the ones I talked about earlier. The first thing I do as soon as I sit with a client is I, I intuitively can choose the patterns. I can see the patterns really, really quickly. I can say, okay, this is a self-love thing. This is an attachment thing. This is a boundary thing. This is um, a trauma thing. I can see that. Um, how can I help my clients see this quickly? That's when I created the love blueprint. The five assessments that you can take the quiz and you get to see your own spaces. And if you want to go back and either have your partner take the quiz or you take the quiz for your partner based on how you think they would answer, you get to see their areas. So you have this beautiful map of your exact blueprint that tells you exactly what to do next. So if it's a boundaries thing, you get to go to the boundaries module and say, okay, well, my boundaries are walled off and I need to open up. So I'm going to go to this meditation. I'm going to go to this um, exercise and this is what I'm going to do. How cool is that? Yeah, Laura, you're talking about the, the group, right? How cool is that? This is, this is the most exciting, one of the most exciting things. So I thought, this is just my evolution of what's been going on for the last eight years. These women are living these great relationships. How about, but is that okay? You know when I talked about like being grateful for where we are, but desiring more. Grateful. Most of the women after this program, they were grateful for where they were in their relationship. Or where they were with themselves, with their love. But where is that? Like some of them are like, oh, but I want more. I, now that I see what's possible... Now, I want more. I want passion. I want pleasure. I want fun. I want excitement. Right? See, so who wants that? Me. I, I wanted that. Like, once my husband and I got in a good place, I wanted more. So then I dove into energy, energy psychology. Some um, healing work. Some pleasure, passion work. I learned how to create that type of a relationship that you think is only available in the movies. That relationship where your husband still looks at you with that glimmer in their eyes, talks about you lovingly, adoringly, that you love them so much, that you know you're building a life and a, a legacy together, you dream together. The kind where, you know, they'll chase you around the, the kitchen counter, not because you're fighting, but because they just want you so bad because, you know, it's just an attachment. It's a butterflies, the fireworks again. Yeah. 
Are you guys hearing hearing this? What are you guys thinking? Tell me what's up. So here we are. The evolution. So now I'm adding that into the program. So now you have this area of revealing. We reveal the exact patterns that are keeping you stuck, those subconscious patterns for you and your partner, and you learn exactly how to change them. Then you heal. So the healing part is in there as well. And then transform, transform into that passion, that pleasure, setting a foundation for life, for the greatest love story to continue, to get even greater and greater and greater. I didn't stop there though. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because I want you to know, no stone has gone uncovered. I took a class at Harvard about how to teach adults, how, um, how, how to teach adults, how adults learn. And I'm putting that into the program and how to create change through language, through story, through inspiration and, and motivation. I'm putting that into the program. Then I thought, can we do this in less than a year? Because who wants to wait a year in pain in their relationship? No one. Can, can we collapse time? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Whatever container you have to fill, you will fill it. So let's make the container small. That's it. Six months. Six months is what you need to create this. To create the greatest love story to reveal the underlying, the heart of the problem, the real heart of the problem, not just talk about things. Reveal the heart of the problem. Get the exact tools to change your exact situation. Heal the inner child, the past traumas, the past triggers. So you're no longer getting triggered. You get to function in your adult brain. Loving yourself, huge part of it. And then transforming it all into passion, into pleasure, into excitement again. So this is where we landed. The most world-class experience, the most life-changing experience ever created. I'm so, so excited about it. It is a six-month program called The Greatest Love Experience. And it's, again, it's evolved over time, and this is where we landed. Six-month experience. And what I'm going to do, and you become the hero of it. Here's what it is. You get everything that I just talked about. Transforming your future. Ignite pleasure, passion, romance. Create deep emotional peace. Release triggers and wounds of the past. Step into freedom and fulfillment. Deep connection with yourself, with others. Enhance communication. Uncover your true authentic self. We do this together in six months. Every, every week, for the first three weeks, we jump on a group coaching called together where we dive in to your specific challenges. Groups are never bigger than 20 people because I need you to have your individual intention because that's what you deserve. You get implementation guides and workbooks to make sure there are videos that you can do and work through. And then we have six live monthly healing sessions as well. So you are doing not just the healing in the middle of the, of the program, but we're doing it every month together. Because I know sometimes it can be really hard to sit back and do it yourself. And I have meditations, guided imagery, energy clearing, subconscious reprogramming, reprogramming tools all sitting there for you. So here's the thing. This is called The Greatest Love Experience. It's about creating your greatest love story. And some of you are ready. Some of you are gonna be called into this. You're like, yes, Val, give me the link. Let's do this. Here I am. I am ready. I am ready for all this. I know that I've created so much change in the last three days, I can't imagine what six months would look like, right? So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna do something really special. So the cost of this program is a six month program. You get six months of live coaching, six months of healing. You also get the program. It doesn't release until mid-October. So it's not actually being released until mid-October. The price is $4444, $4,444. I'm doing something really, really special 
for you guys here in the communication challenge, I'm going to take off more than $1,500, almost $1,500. So the special price for you for a limited time for you guys in this challenge, if you jump in, is going to be $2,997. This is for the, all the six months, everything that I talked about. I'm going to put the link. I just put the link in the chat so you can go check it out. See what you think. I know some of you are ready. Some of you are just like, yes, let's do this. It doesn't start until mid-October. So I give you an option. Usually I would just give you a six-month six payment plan. But because it doesn't start until October, I get to give you a seven-month payment plan. So that would be $4.50 a month. And you actually get an extra month of coaching. Because as soon as you join, I'm going to add you into our current group coaching calls. So you get to start the group coaching right away. And I'm going to give you a couple bonuses to get you started, to keep you, to get you going before the program releases. You get the Fight Less, Connect More um, communication program, which is a $297 program. You're going to get the five brain-based steps to clarity, success, and achievement, which I don't even sell separately. And you're going to get the self-love and boundaries package as well. And you are automatically going to be enrolled in the love program. So the love program, I've talked about it a little bit before. It is the program um, that's going to be all live. And it's going to be selling for $555, but you're going to get it for free when you join the greatest love experience with me today um, at this in incredible, incredible uh, discount just for you guys here. And that is going to be how to be and receive love. It's going to be out of this world. It's going to be so amazing. So you'll definitely want to jump in on that. Uh, if you pay in full, the first five women who pay in full will actually also get a half-day private VIP experience with me. So that's amazing, too. So let me know what you guys are thinking. I put the link um, in the chat. I'll put it in the group later. Also, maybe you, you're kind of like, oh, I know, I know, I know I want to be part of this. Uh, I have some questions. I need to see if this is going to work for me, if it's going to work for my situation. You're not quite, you know, ready for it. You know, what I'm going to ask, too, is why I'm getting this other link ready. There are some ladies in here that are all have been part of my programs. I would love if you could just, you know, put one sentence about something that you've experienced or um, something that you've gotten out of the program or out of working with me or anything that you want to put to inspire other ladies to join us, to join us and to create some amazing transformation in their lives as well. So anything that you want to put in there in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, all right. So for those, some of you are like ready, you're already at the sales page, you're about to check out, which is amazing. Some of you aren't yet. And that that's okay too. Some of you need to think about it. Need to, I'm a thinker. I like to ask all the, the questions and understand all the details, and that's totally fine. Some of you are like, okay, I'm gonna trust my gut. This, this is exactly what I need. This is what I've been looking for. I am worthy, I am deserving of this, and I'm jumping in. I'm gonna be one of those first five. I'm gonna get that half day VIP. I'm gonna, like, I am like ready to go, and I wanna start it off with a bang, and I wanna go. Some of you are ready. So there you go, there's your link. For those of you who need who need some time or, or need to ask me some questions or wonder if, okay, will it help with this vow? Will it help with this? That's awesome too. Um, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to put a link to schedule a breakthrough call with me. It's a 30 to 45 minute call. It's free. It's no pressure. We'll see if the program is right for you. We'll see if it's a good fit for you. And believe me, I'm going to tell you if it's not, because it, it doesn't serve me to have you in there if I don't think it will work for you, and it doesn't serve you. Um, it's frustrating, you know, if, if it's not gonna work for you, I'm gonna tell you, because it, it, that doesn't serve me, right? 
So I'm going to be straight up and honest with you, and I'll let you know what it will help with and what maybe it can't help with. I'm going to tell you right now, though, I, I want to be up front. It may not be up for everyone. Um, it's not going, if, if there's any kind of physical abuse, please, 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 please call the hotline.org. Get out. So that it's not for you. F, there is um, any kind of untreated uh, major mental illness or substance use. That is the main focus. Uh, this will have to wait. Okay. So those are the, the two big things that I, I want to make sure you're aware of. And I need to act in my ethics and make sure you're aware of that as well. Those are the first things that you want to concentrate now. Now, if there is anxiety or depression or you are in treatment or recovery, then absolutely. This is something we can work through. I have the experience with that. I feel uh, very comfortable in those spaces. So let's talk and, you, and we can see if that will be the right thing as well. Okay, ladies, so I want to thank you. Right? We are only in day three, and there's been so many breakthroughs, so many questions. I want to thank you for showing up, for being here, for being part of this. For those who are ready to take it to the next level, who know you're worthy of it, who know I'm the right person to do this with, who know you're ready to write your greatest love story, who know who knows what's possible for yourself and even if you don't have evidence of it right now you're willing to have faith in it then I invite you to join me because um, the program is going to go up to four thousand four hundred forty four dollars so this is like huge um, huge and that price is going to go away and you get lots of bonuses with it All right. um, Bonnie I did not draw the name I forgot so I will post it later tonight uh, for you guys. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you all for being here. Pay attention for tomorrow. Like I said, challenge is going to get better and better and better. And we only have two days left, so keep showing up. Keep taking those micro commitments. For those in the VIP, go ahead and jump on to the Zoom. I'll be there in about five minutes. For the rest of you, thank you for being here. Let me know if you have any questions. Continue the challenge. Do the work. Show up for yourself. Show up for your family. Okay. Have a great evening. Bye, guys.